to, to begin with, let us open a workspace called Spectrasys 4x4 versus FaceRay. And the way we open any workspace in System View is to go to the Start page and then point to the workspace by going here and then um, uh, identifying that workspace in the folder uh, where it is stored and uh, click open and then it will open the workspace. For now I'm going to cancel but of course it will try to create a blank workspace which I'm going to uh, close for the time being. Um, in this workspace called Spectrasys 4x4 versus Phase Array, we have four folders called Spectrasys TX1, TX2, TX3, TX4 and we have another folder called Phase Array TX. In all these folders TX1 to TX4 what we have is a traditional way of building a phased array and then simulating it. Uh, the traditional way is to take a source and then split into the number of channels that you want. For In this particular schematic it is in 16 number of antennas are there, 16 channels and each channel is defined by the uh, digital attenuator, programmable attenuator, um, a, an amplifier and a programmable phase shifter. We take the complex voltage by analyzing this channel at the end of that and then we feed that voltage into an antenna and then we find uh, if we know all the complex voltages V1 to V16 then we can uh, compute the far field using uh, the equations that are uh, broadly available. So what is the problem? We can simulate this very quickly for example you can see that um, we can uh, run this simulation and we can see that it simulates in a fairly uh, quick time 2.8875 seconds and we can post process those voltages and we can plot those voltages and we can see that the far field pattern is computed and then displayed uh, so we can put that side by side uh, now, so what is the problem? We can go on doing this. We can go to the next one and then we can open a design uh, that is 128 elements uh, here and then we can simulate that 128 elements and then we can plot a pattern. Uh, and then we can extend the same thing. Uh, in folder number three we have 256. In folder number four we have 512 uh, phase array and antenna elements. So we can analyze all these things by manually setting up the required attenuations and phase shifts and then uh, find out the far field pattern. Uh, we already have done the work and you can see that the as a result of that we can see that for 16 element we have about 2.875 seconds for 128 we have about 43 seconds and then 256 elements we have 90 seconds and for 512 elements we have about 780 seconds. So all these indicate that the simulation speed can significantly go quicker, quickly climb up and then it may become impossible to simulate once the number of elements grow uh, to, to a certain level. Um, so is there a way out? That is what we want to demonstrate here and we'll open another uh, uh, schematic from this uh, folder called uh, phase array TX and if you open the schematic and then study a little bit what we have here is a source and a, a scalable uh, generic model for array splitters, a splitter uh, that can be split into any number of elements by specifying the number of rows and columns and we can specify the w once the, the number of elements are specified and if we put it here it will replicate itself to the number of elements uh, x by y uh, and then there are other attributes that we can uh, give it to the digital uh, attenuator here and then if we put an amplifier that will replicate itself to the number of elements that are uh, the splitter is splitting into. Uh, similarly the phase shifter uh, is a programmable phase shifter where we can specify the angle uh, into which we want to look at. So phi equals 0, theta equals to 20 we'll look into that direction. And finally the antenna array uh, is where it takes the uh, voltages from the phase shifter output 
and then apply them to the antennas and then the antenna model will compute the uh, far field pattern for us and then that can be ultimately plotted. So let us do a, a simple calculation here. Let's take the simplest case of a 256 element array uh, which took, if you remember, the 256 element array took about 90 seconds here. Uh, we'll go on, we are going to simulate the same thing uh, here and then see what how much time it takes. So if we go and then simulate this, uh, first of all, yeah, well, let's go and then simulate this. It simulated in uh, about 4.7 seconds actually. There may be some reminiscence, so let me re-simulate. Yeah, you can see that it has updated to 2.6 seconds, which is close to what uh, our 16 element array simulated initially. So you can see that the uh, this modern technique simulates the same thing and then of course you can also even plot and then see that it makes sense. So if you just run the plot pattern two equations and then see that uh, the the far field pattern for 256, it's uh, pretty uh, uh, tangible and then you can even put a marker and then see uh, the direction in which uh, it is pointing. It is theta equals to 20 and then phi equals to zero degrees as specified here. And the f finally, if what what if I want to increase this number of elements to a large number, uh, say um, 100 by 100? And with the traditional technique, we know for sure that a 100 by 100 uh, cannot run in any uh, time sooner. Uh, so let let's see uh, how much time it takes for uh, the modern technique to simulate this. As you can see, the time will get uh, updated in uh, a little bit, which is 4.5 seconds. And you can see that the direction is same direction, but the beam narrowed down significantly. For 10,000 elements, the gain has gone up pretty significantly. And you can see that uh, the simulation time is contained very well. Thank you very much for this, uh, for watching this demo.